I said, look, I'm not bougie like that. I'll take country, boom, we're from Texas. I'll take some ghetto, or I'll be a little scared, let's do it. This drug, sex, rock and roll life, I ain't used to this. So vacation time is definitely over. As you know, me and my family just got back from our biggest road trip ever. 1,730 miles of open road and I loved every minute of it. That's literally 27 hours of driving one way. When I tell people about our vacations and they find out we're driving, the response is typically, I couldn't do that. There's no way I would drive with my family across country for so long. Why can't you find cheap flights? And we get this response typically because we have faster ways of traveling across the country than in a car. I've literally traveled across three continents in less time. A few years ago when I went to Togo, West Africa, it was, it was from Austin to New York was four hours. New York to France was seven hours. And France down to Togo was seven hours. And so combined across three continents, less than 27 hours. You don't have to say it. Some of you may be thinking that I'm literally out of my mind for the contents of this video. But the reason that I love to drive, because for me, it's more about the journey. It's more about the experience than it is the destination. Now, don't get me wrong. I've enjoyed some of the places that we visited, but I love the steps in between as well. Now, what I'm not saying is that you have to love driving down the highway like I do. But I want you to grab this principle. I want you to grasp this principle that I learned from the road. Learn to enjoy the journey as much as the destination. You see, sometimes when we go on vacation, we have this false idea that when we arrive, we're going to have peace. We're going to have joy. I'm going to sit back or whatever you do, and I'm going to, re I'm going to enjoy myself. But the truth of the matter is, I need to learn to have joy. I need to learn how to relax. I need to learn how to enjoy my family while I'm on the way. I have peace while I'm on the way. Joy is mine along the way. Anybody ever notice that when you go on vacation, it takes a few days for you to get out of work mode and to get to the relaxation mode? Well, that's one of the things for me when I'm on the road, when it's just me and the highway. Yeah. Typically, the passengers in our car, they have their ox cores, they have their books, and they're in their world, and I get to be in my world as I just drive and enjoy the country and enjoy God's creation, and I get my long time where I'm not tethered to any uh, social media, I'm not tethered to any uh, phone calls, I'm not tethered to any emails, and as you know, inevitably, if you've been on any road trips, things happen. At the end of day two, we stopped at a hotel that was, I'm pretty sure was involved in a few horror movies from the 80s. So typically what we'll do is as we're driving and I'll just drive until I get tired and I tell my wife to start looking on Priceline or someplace like that for uh, a hotel that we can. And so we found this one hotel. We couldn't get adjoining rooms and we probably could have pushed it to Vegas, but it was late at night. We were tired mm -hmm. and, and the rooms in Vegas on the weekend were much more expensive. And so we wanted to save a few dollars. And, and so, so we stayed at this budget hotel and casino and it bit us in the butt. <sighs> I said, doggy, please don't bite me, dog. Was it like, Argh. The water literally smelled like sulfur. And Reagan learned the hard way because she jumped in the shower first. I was about to jump in the shower in my room. And thankfully, SJ came bolting down the hallway to tell me, don't take a shower. The water stinks. The water stinks. And so, yeah, sorry about that, Reagan. We couldn't warn you. The entire hotel smelled like an ashtray. Right. It wouldn't, probably wouldn't have been so bad, but I have an aversion to cigarette smoke and it makes me feel horrible. There were some men that looked a little sketchy hanging out outside of the girls' room. And again, we didn't have a joining room. So then I had to sleep away from my wife and ended up having to sleep uh, in the girls' room. But in it all, despite all the challenges, we were sharing these horrible experiences as a family. And we could have made up in our mind that it was going to ruin our day. But instead, we decided that, you know what, we're going to make the most of these memories. Because if you really think about it, in the grand scheme of things, it could have been a lot worse. Pull off in the dope trick shit. Waits for the wife. Sesh for the sesh. You know, we out here wilding out, man. Wait, you should go. I can drive my bros. 
Dama Bros. Yeah. You see, pull one off. Hey, Reagan and Bree. Did the boogeyman try to get y'all last night? Hey, Ray, how was that sofa, sofa bath? Hey, Ray. Day three. Oh, and it smells like cigarettes, so you get it. We are in an ashtray. We are in a living ashtray. Can you hold this? Now, I don't know about everybody else. I still slept like a baby. But I know, all I know is everybody else napped in the car yesterday. I ain't no nap. So when I hit the head, hit pillow, somebody could came kidnapped y'all. He came in the room. He came in the room. He said, all right, yeah, enough giggling. Time for bed. I go in my mom's room. They're playing music. SJ's up with his guitar on my ass, jumping on the bed. And here's the thing. They all finna get in the car right now, get some breakfast, and go right back to bed. SJ, you left your bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Vegas. I'll I said, look, I'm not bougie like that. I'll take country and boom, we're from Texas. I'll take some ghetto, or I'll be a little scared. Let's do it. This drug, sex, rock and roll life, I ain't used to this. We church kids, TT. <laughs> this ain't for us. We was over here like, what is that? <laughs> Wash the blankets. <laughs> but the experience that we shared as a family, we're going to be able to talk about and laugh about for years to come because it was a part of the journey. If I can appreciate life in this terrible hotel, it's doing something on the inside of me that's giving me gratitude and letting me draw closer to God so that I can understand that, you know what, God, no matter where I find myself, you're still present. You're still here. Even though it was smoke filled, I had air in my lungs. I had the capacity of my body and I can wake up the next day and drive to our destination. And so lesson three from the road, despite things that come your way, learn to enjoy the journey because we're going somewhere. Do I smell and taste cigarettes? I just tasted cigarettes because I was sleeping. Like, I think I'm a little, whoo, little buzz. Like, <laughs> Someone came into my room and gave me a vape. <laughs> 50 Nick, dude? <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. We saw a bear. When we got to our destination, we saw a bear walking down the street. See, being from Texas, we don't get to see that every day. We don't even get to see bears unless we're in the zoo or at the circus. And I don't really go to the zoo or circus, so I ain't never seen a bear. We arrived at our destination. We went out to dinner We before we went to the grocery store to buy groceries for the week. And we saw a literal bear. We talked to some of the locals, the guy that was checking us out at the grocery store, and his thing was, yeah, you know, they come around all the time, just shoo them off. They come and they steal the watermelons all the time. Bruh, it's a bear. And some of the locals, were, when we were telling them where we were from, they were like, oh, yeah, we get bears. Oh, no, Texas, I can't deal with snakes. Look here. Look here. I cannot run a snake. As a matter of fact, I've come into contact with snakes, deadly poisonous snakes, and I came out on top. Listen, I don't care who you are, where you are, you ain't got, listen, you, a bear? And so immediately my family, we jumped into the mode of, listen, if a bear come, what we gonna do? Wait, bears don't like milk? Wait, bears don't like milk. Who do you see with a milk aisle? Tiny. Tiny milk aisle. 
Let me see your eye. Close it. Oh, it really is. Close the other eye. Open the other eye. Open that eye. The bear swatch. Yeah, no, no, no. Is that from the bear? Come on, bro. What happened? It hurts. Mom punched me in the eye. That bear's ruining our lives. This location. Bro, pour milk on it. Pour chocolate milk on it. So, if you want some real bear knowledge. Okay, tell me the bear knowledge. Real bear knowledge. Ready? If you see a grizzly bear and it's going to attack you, right? It's charging you. Stand still, stare at the ground. Because most of the time they're just trying to bluff you and get you afraid. If you see a black bear, you gotta fight for your life because they're not gonna quit. If a black, if a grizzly bear's attacking you, they toss you around just like on the revenant and if you just act dead, it's gonna leave you alone. Black bears, they don't care. They're just gonna keep on going in. And so you gotta fight for your life, find a sharp stick or something and go to town on its eyeballs. On its eyeballs, good job, good job. I took on my shoes so I can run if a bear comes. You ain't gonna catch me slipping in no chocolates. Here it comes, just pour chocolate milk on you, bro. I swear, it'll keep you alive. Hold on, who's the bear? Trace the bear. You the bear? Okay, you the bear. Y'all better go fast. Y'all better go fast. Okay, there's a bear. <laughs> anyway, lesson three from the road. Enjoy the journey. It'll help you enjoy the beauty of the destination that much more. Giggling, time for bed.